It's a very special welcome to uh, to all this uh, third Sunday of Pentecost. Also, Father's Day. So congratulations, dads. Happy Father's Day. And to all of you listening, we're glad to have you with us today. I know some are at home, probably in your bathroom, sipping coffee. Some are in the church. But as I say each week, wherever we are, we are God's church. So welcome. A little bit about the service today. It uh, comes, uh, Gospel Lesson talks about Jesus sending out the 12 into the highways and byways to bring healing and wholeness, uh, to cast out demons, to uh, to, uh, uh, to to allow the love of God uh, to touch lives throughout the region. And at the very end, he says, freely you have received, freely give. I think those words are so powerful and so important because we are a people who have been blessed. As the disciples were blessed long ago, we are blessed today. Blessed with spiritual blessings, financial blessings, um, all kinds of different blessings in our lives. And um, I think it's important that as we've been so blessed, it's important for us to be a blessing to one another. So I hope we're able to uh, move forward in our Christian uh, faith journeys uh, and be those blessings to one another. Again, as I said, I'm glad you're with us. I hope this service today is uh, helpful and meaningful for you. And with that said, let me begin. Uh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I continue with the prayer of the day. And so to you, O God of compassion, you've opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love out into our hearts, that overflowing with joy we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Again, uh, glad to have you. And I turn the service over now to our music team as they share their gifts of music. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to stay. The Gospel lesson for this, the third Sunday of Pentecost, is from the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, beginning with verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore asked the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And Jesus summoned his twelve disciples, and he gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Be received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And so grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you again as we gather this day. Yes, some in their respective homes, probably sipping coffee. 
in the bathrobes and and some are in the church. But Lord, wherever we are, we are your church, your people. So Lord, come now. Come and fill the hearts and lives of all your people. I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleased in your sight. And this I pray. Amen. Before we begin, I just want to wish all the dads in the room a very happy Father's Day. You know, fathers don't get much respect anymore. One comedian observed that boys growing up spending hours and hours throwing footballs and going to games with their dads. And when they make it big in the college scene for the big bowl game, they get interviewed. What's the first thing they say? Hi, Mom. <laughs> no, fathers don't get much respect anymore. But the news on Father's Day, it's not all bad. The National Center for Fathering conducts Father of the Year essay contests in partnership with local schools and sponsoring organizations. Well, a number of years ago, eight con contests were held, and altogether over 100,000 school children submitted essays on the topic. Its title was What My Father Means to Me. Here's a sampling of essays from these past contests. First grader writes, says, My dad's the best egg ever. I would kiss a pig for him. <laughs> Another the first grader writes, My dad's a Frito-Lay man. That's an important job because Frito-Lay Frito -Lay means chips, which is food. And that is so important because you cannot live without food. Then a fourth grader writes, says, sometimes it's a joke. I'll put my stinky socks in his briefcase. So at work the next day, he will think of me. He goes on to say, he's always at the concerts and plays that I'm in, even though he lives about an hour away. Then a fifth grader writes, she says, you know what else my dad does? He braids my hair. I'm the only girl I know whose dad braids her hair. I think he's a perfect dad. He's already is the world's greatest dad to me. I just wanted everyone to know that. And finally, a sixth grader writes, he says, one time I had an assembly and I was a soloist and my dad was in the first row. And after my song, I smiled at my dad. My dad smiled back and my dad started crying. That was the best thing that I ever saw. So the news for dads, it isn't all bad. Still, Father's Day is known as the day that grown-up kids call home to speak to dad. And if you got a Father's Day present, I hope it was something that you can really use. Actually, dads, in a monetary terms, what can our children give us that we cannot purchase for ourselves? In a society as affluent as ours, it's a real challenge to give anyone anything that they truly need. What do you give to someone who has everything? Now, you and I may feel like we don't have everything, but think about it. Don't we basically have everything that we need? Most of the things we want are simply bigger and better, variations of what we already have. What do you give to people, to people who have everything? That's what I want to talk about today. See, Jesus called his 12 disciples to him, and he gave them authority. Authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. Then he sent them out with these instructions, where he said, Do not be, go among the, the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans, but rather to the lost sheep of Israel. And he said, As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out the demons. Then he adds these profound and powerful words. He says, Freely you have received. Freely give. Here's a motivation for all of evangelism for all works of justice, for all foreign missions. Freely, you have received. Freely, give. I want to begin by saying, we as a people, we have so much. That's the first thing I think we need to see, that we have so much. There's a visitor from a third world country that came to the U.S. to visit. And he was riding through a subdivision, and he noticed a car backing out of the garage, and he said with amazement, he said, you even have houses for your cars? Dr. Samuel Zumwalt tells about one of his friends who went on a mission trip to Honduras and had her whole worldview shifted. She said to Dr. Zumwalt, she says, I've always felt poor since I lost my big four-bedroom house in a divorce. Then I came to Honduras. And I saw how the victims of, of Hurricane Mitch were thrilled to have these two room houses that we were building over there for them. She said, I came back to my 600-square-foot condominium, and I saw that I live in a palace compared to them. She went on to say, I am rich, and I never knew it until I went to Honduras. We are rich, folks. 
If only we knew it. And that's why we need to listen closely to Jesus' words. Freely you have received. Freely give. Motivational speaker Tony Robbins. He tells about something life-changing that occurred on Thanksgiving Day many years ago. A young boy woke up with a sense of foreboding. His family was in dire financial straits. They didn't have much to look forward to that Thanksgiving Day, just a meager meal. They were too proud to ask for charity. This led to frustration and harsh words between mom and dad. The boy was devastated to watch his mother and father become more and more angry and depressed with each passing hour. Then suddenly, he said there was a loud and totally unexpected knock on the door. Standing at that door was a tall man in rumpled clothing, grinning broadly and carrying a huge basket. In that basket was a multitude of good foods, turkey, stuffing, pies, sweet potatoes, canned goods. The man at the door said, this is from someone who knows your need and wants you to know that you are loved, that you are cared for. The father tried to protest, but the man holding the basket said, hey, I'm just a delivery person. Have a great Thanksgiving. In that brief encounter, says Tony Robbins, this young man's life was changed. The kindness of this stranger would never be forgotten. And the young man vowed that one day he would repay that grand gesture. By the time this young man was 19 years old, he had begun to fulfill that promise. That Thanksgiving, with his own earnings, he set out to purchase groceries, not for himself, but for two families that he knew that were in need. When he arrived at the first house, he was greeted by a Latino woman with six children. Her husband had abandoned the family just two days earlier, and they had no food. You can imagine the pandemonium when this young man went to his car and started bringing in turkey and stuffings and sweet potatoes and canned goods and all the things that he had brought for this family. The children shrieked and the woman started exclaiming, You are a gift from God! You are a gift from God! No, said the young man, I'm just a delivery boy. This is a gift from a friend. The young man was sharing with others because someone first shared with him. Actually, this is the personal story of Tony Robbins himself. He was that boy, stressed out family, received that Thanksgiving basket long ago, and he turned around and began giving out similar baskets at 19 years of age. And because as a motivational speaker, he has achieved astounding success, Robbins also started a foundation, a foundation that has given Thanksgiving baskets to hundreds of thousands of people over the years. So remember, freely you have received, freely give. We are rich. We only knew it. That's why we need to listen closely to Jesus' words. Freely you have received, freely give. Here's a motivation for all good works. Freely you have received, freely give. Of course, when Jesus spoke these words to his disciples, he was not talking about financial blessings. He was talking about the spiritual blessings that the disciples had received through him. His love, his grace, his peace. He was asking them to go out into the world and to share the faith that he had nurtured in them. Pastor Daniel Witowski tells about a coffee mug that he found in a gift shop in an abbey. He says he paid a ridiculous price for it. It was because of the inscription that he found on the side of the mug and read like this, and I quote, He said, God danced the day you were born. You are loved. You are beautiful. You are a gift of God, his own possession. You are a gift to all humankind, God's gift of love to them. End of quote. Pastor figured, hey, that's worth 19 bucks. And thus he says against all odds, I bought the most expensive mug that I have ever owned. But he claims that this mug is now one of his most valuable things he owns because it reminds him of the mission of Jesus. The mission that says to share the message that every human being is loved. Beautiful, a gift of God, and as a gift to humankind, you and I are loved by God. And this makes us spiritually rich, if only, if only we knew it. We have treasures that are not dependent on the stock market, or the size of our bank account, or the resale value of our house. We're rich, because we are loved. We are loved by other people, and we are loved by God. We're particularly mindful of our family relationships on a special occasion, such as this Father's Day. To know that we are loved is the greatest gift we can receive from a parent. But to know that we have a heavenly parent who loves us even more is the most wonderful and awesome gift of all. 
Finally, in 1997, a soldier in Jordan went on a rampage. They shot and killed seven Israeli schoolgirls who were on a field trip to the Island of Peace, which is a park on the Jordan River between Israel and Jordan. Two of the girls were killed on the spot. The others were taken to a Jordanian hospital, but later died. In the midst of anguish and anger and alienation, without warning, King Hussein, the king of the country where the crazy gunman lived, he left his throne, he left his palace, he left the very country without notifying photographers or journalists, and he entered the homes of the families of the slain girls. King Hussein and all his majesty and all his grandeur entered each of the modest homes of these grieving families, and he fell upon his knees. He bowed down before them. In each home, he looked at the eyes of the mother, the father, the sisters, the brothers, all the people who were grieving the loss of each young girl, and he said, I beg you, forgive me. Your daughter is like my daughter. Your loss is my loss. May God help you to bear your pain. And the king, humbled before them, bowed and walked out to go back to his country, back to his sovereignty. This king, this Muslim king, gave us an image of our relationship with Christ, that the God of all the universe humbled himself and came into our world to show us how much we are loved. And now it is our job to take that love to others. Freely you have received, freely give. And I pray that it be so. And all God's people say, Amen. God bless you. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Let me be to you a sacrifice, and I will praise you, Lord, and I will sing of love from thine. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Lord, I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace and let me never be separated from you. O oh Lord, may I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. And all God's people said, Amen. And so again, we want to thank you for joining us this day. We hope this service today has been helpful in your Christian journey. Please know our love and prayers are with each and every one of you. 
And again, if we can ever be of any help, uh, do, do not hesitate to call us or email us at the church office. And so receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you.